Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, budding game developers. Um, today, we're going to be learning how to do something that is really not that interesting, but is something you need to probably know how to do. So what we're going to learn how to do today is take a look at the debugger. The debugger is really important for understanding exactly what's going wrong with your game or looking at certain stats about your game. And a lot of people don't seem to know how to use it. So you can also make your own sort of built-in debugger or you know make counters and stuff to test stuff, which I absolutely recommend. Sometimes the debugger isn't enough to figure out where you've gone wrong, but the debugger is a very good start. So let's take a look at it. So we're gonna click on the application and we're gonna throw in some values. So we're gonna need a global value and a global string. We'll call this global value A. Oh, that's invalid, I guess, because that's the default one. We'll just say value A. All right, value A, we're going to give it a number, 10. Now we got a string here. We're going to call it string A. And this string is going to be something like, you smell like dog buns. So that's our global string. This is our global value. Now we're going to insert an active object. We're going to name this guy. Let's go ahead and give guy some art, just because art is fun. So we're going to throw in some art right quick he's just gonna be some dude um, with a dumb face so here's his eyeballs and here's his mouth there he is okay so this is our dude now we're gonna give this guy here some values we're gonna say stuff and things and now we're gonna throw in some code so we're gonna create an always event and we are always going to add one to stuff and things and um, we're gonna say every um, one second, we are going to create another guy. We are going to set the position. Random frame. Uh, this is the X, so frame width. I can't spell. That's weight. Width. <laughs> I'm stupid. <clears throat> so the X position is random frame width, and we are going to set the Y position to random Y. Wait, sorry, random frame height as the height of the frame and the uh, other one was the width. So let's take a look at the debugger. Boom. So some stuff is going to start happening. Now this up here is the debugger. Okay. So the debugger can do some things. Now we can pause the application by clicking pause. We can resume with play. If we click this button here, this will rewind all the way to the back of the frame. The frame will start over. Um, this will just shut it down if you hit the stop button. So two things to keep in mind as well though, you can run the application or you can run the frame. If you run the frame, you will only be able to test the current frame. If you have anything in this frame, any code that will jump you to another frame, it will just shut down, you'll be done. So if you need to test the uh, multiple frames or the entire application, you always want to test the application. But since we are simply running one frame, we will just do this. Now you can see off the bat that we have an object counter. Okay, so as these guys are added along, more objects are going to pop in here and populate. So that's really good to know how many objects you have currently in your game. Uh, and this is how many megabytes of RAM it is currently using. So we can close the deb debugger by pressing the X, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to show or hide. Let's pause this so it stops. And we click the plus. Any, this will give us more information. So this is also how you add more objects. Okay. So this tells us some general stuff about our frame. This is frame one. This is how long it's been running. Watch if we press play, the counter continues to go. And this is our frames per second value. So we have global values, we can expand it. The global value A is 10, and here's our global strings. String A says, you smell like dog buns. So this is how we can test our, our status of our global values and strings. Now, we also might want to find out what exactly is going on with an object. To do that, you click add object. And then this is going to give you a list of objects. You're going to have active objects. And then if you have stuff like counters, it'll say, you know, like, I don't know, miscellaneous or something. It's, it separates them for you. So if we expand this. This will be a count of every single object we have in our frame. Now, all we have are these random guys. Guy 1 was the first one to be created, and Guy 27 is the last. So we can look at this and double click, and it tells us all kinds of stuff about it. It tells us our his x and y coordinate, tells us how big he is, how wide and how tall, his fixed value. Um, then you can do a movement. His movement type is static. We can find out his animation frame, which frame number he's on. The <clears throat> If you click on this, the ultra values, it will tell you all of his values. Now, if you remember, this value is counting, so we can keep we can keep tabs on it in real time. All right. 
Um, and as you see, it goes all the way to Z. That's because technically these values are already reserved, even though they might not be in the editor when you click on him and you have to add them. They're still technically there and they do take up like kind of space. Um, anyway, so he also has multiple strings, which we have not set any of them. And we can also check the status of our flags. So, I mean, honestly, that's that's kind of it. Like here, I'll show you. We will add some more stuff though, so we can take a look. We can add a counter and we could add a, add the platform movement object. And we'll add a string. And the string, we'll say the paragraph is hello, hello. Okay, let's run the debugger again. Now, as you see, it actually stays populated with what you were doing before. So if you wanna get rid of something in here, cause it can get pretty cluttered, um, you can right click and click remove and it'll remove it'll move whatever object is out of the list so let's add more so as you see now the add object to debugger list is bigger we still have our active objects which is which is just our guys right now then there's our counter objects we have a text object which is the string object and we have other objects which is the platform movement object let's click on the platform movement object it tells us its x and y position which we don't really care about its fixed value which is its id um, you have alterable values in here multiple strings and flags. Now, unfortunately, it will not tell us um, these values here because these are internal to this object. It'll only tell us values like if we were to actually go in and change the alterable values of the platform movement object, which it does in fact have. Some people aren't aware of that. It has strings and values. Uh, I guess you could put a behavior on it. I've never done that. Um, but yeah, so it'll only show us that, like it's flags and whatnot. So if we look at the, let's add the, um, let's remove this, we'll add the string object, which is a text object. So again, tells us our basic stuff, fixed value, size, and all that. But it also tells us our string, which is hello, hello. That is what is currently displayed. And we can throw in the counter. This tells us our basic stuff about the counter, current value, minimum value, maximum value. So really that's pretty much all there is to the debugger. It just displays more information about objects in real time. And this can be very useful for trying to figure out exactly what's going on with your application. So if you ever have problems, guys, this is a good way to test those out. So there are actually other techniques though, other than using the debugger to debug your games. And so one of them I'm gonna show you is called, or I call it, is called using a canary. So insert an object, boom. I'm gonna give it a picture of a canary. And I'm actually gonna name this canary. Now this is, um, you know, this is a canary in the sense of a canary in a coal mine, which means that when something happens, the canary dies. Uh, we can use a canary to find out if our code is working. So if the line that we want to trigger, we're essentially testing to see if it works, we put the uh, kill command for the canary on that line, and then we know that the line has triggered if the canary dies. So it's a good way to kind of parse out and figure out exactly what's going on in your code and, and sort of, you know, just um, get a better idea of where the problem might lie if you're running into some sort of bug. So let's give it some art, just because that's fun. I drew this canary in Inkscape. Now he's flipping huge. We're gonna resize him. He doesn't need to be ginormous. Now this canary is just for debugging. So uh, obviously you want to uh, destroy him and remove him from the game when you're finished. Or maybe you can find some way just to hide him through code if you are not using a debug version of the program. So let's throw in something we wanna test. Let's say we have a global value, okay? Let's just make a new global value. I'll call it A. And uh, let's say A is always getting bigger. So we're always adding one to A. <clears throat> now let's say we want something to happen when A is like 50 or 100 or something. So we're gonna compare a global value and A equals 100. Um, we would just simply go over here and say destroy. Now this means when this triggers, you know, obviously this canary will be destroyed. So we, we would have had other stuff on this line um, that we were testing, but let's say that stuff wasn't triggering and we couldn't even figure out, we didn't even know if line two was triggering. By putting this canary here and having a destroy command, we can find out if it is in fact triggering. So let's run it and he should just be destroyed. Boop, there he goes. Now let's say we always added um, 
three to A. And we ran it. Now the canary is not going to be destroyed now because it'll never equal 100. It's going to skip right past it. And uh, so now we would know, oh, we didn't even trigger line two. So that is how you use a canary. I find them pretty useful. There's another technique you can do to uh, find out exactly what's going on in your program. Get a little more information. It's kind of similar, but it's it can give you a little more specific information about what is being triggered. So that is to use a debug console that you make for yourself. And essentially, all you're going to do, let's just put in a string. Uh, string object. Where are you? String? Here it is. We'll just throw in a string over here. We're going to call this debug. So instead of the canary in this case, let's uh, let's edit this so it will trigger. So we're always going to add one to A. <clears throat> we're actually going to write something into the debug string whenever this triggers. So we do that by going to uh, change alterable string and just whatever you want to put in here. Just write in something that makes sense for the line. You could say like line two, okay, or whatever. And so we will run this. And right now it just says text, line two, okay. So we know line two triggered. <clears throat> and we could also do this for like, you know, all kinds of different stuff like like uh, button presses, check button presses. So this is gonna be right, copy this, this will be left. So let's just drag this down. And when we, when we uh, click the right button or the right arrow, we will say right press. And then over here, this will be left press. So we find out first that line two is okay. We're pressing right, we're pressing left. So by using this debug console, it can give you a little more information exactly about what is going on within your program to help you debug it. So I would like to thank you guys for watching this and I hope that you are having a fantastic day. As always, please feel free to leave any questions and comments down below. And uh, if you can, please join my Discord channel. It's a great place to hang out. So thank you guys for watching this and I will see you in the next video.